word correctly. Thank you. 
Thus far, 
Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. says to us, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him mm -hmm. before the foundation of the world, oh, that we should be holy and without blame mm -hmm. before him in love, oh, having predestined us, predestinated, excuse me, us, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself mm -hmm. according to the good pleasure of his will. Amen. Verse 6 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 through 6. Amen. Amen. We thank God again for uh, His Word. Amen. And we praise God for all of you and we give the Lord all praise and glory. I'm thankful that He is our, uh, our Creator, our Savior, and He is our Keeper. We thank God for everyone in their respectful place in the name of the Lord. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell. Oh, oh, oh. 
say. Hallelujah. And my fellow would say, I can feel God. Yeah. 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 Bless him right now. For his goodness. For his mercy. Hallelujah. From this passage of scripture that we read to you, we want to strive to share with you today as we do part three of praise God for his sovereign work. And our uh, subtopic addendum, if you want to call it that, that we will add to that is God is to be praised. God is to be praised for the consequences. People of God, we have been in these four glorious verses for the past few Sundays. And we've discovered when we began that Paul is praising the Lord in these verses. In fact, his anthem, my brothers and sisters, his anthem, He is an anthem. Praise the Lord. Of praise. His anthem of praise runs all the way through verse 14. All right. But in these first four verses, Paul praises God the Father for his sovereign work in salvation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Paul tells us in verse 3 that God is to be praised for his charity, his love. God is so good to his people. And since God is good, he has good thoughts toward those he loves. His good thoughts toward those, toward the redeemed that manifest themselves in good gifts to his people. Amen. And I know and believe in my heart that God deserves to be praised for yes. that. Yes. Don't you? Amen. Then in verse 4, Paul tells us that God is to be praised for his choices. Mm -hmm. This verse drew us into deep spiritual waters. Amen. But we found out that our salvation was not an accident. Come on now. It was part of God's eternal plan. Praise the Lord. He loved us in spite of our lost sinful condition. And he saved us by his amazing, marvelous, incomparable grace. And again, I believe he deserves to be praised for that also. Amen. Amen. As we move into verses 5 and 6, mm -hmm. Paul points out to us, and let me go back to verse 5 and 6 and read that again. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Mm -hmm. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. So as we move into verses 5 and 6, Paul tells us that God is to be praised for the consequences. His love for us and his choice of us in salvation produces for us some powerful and eternal consequences. So I want to share those consequences with uh, you today by the grace of God. When I'm through with this, I hope you will agree with me that God is to be praised for the consequences of his love 
and of his salvation. Let's examine those consequences together. Verse 4. The B, the verse 4, let me let me um, read that. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That's the A part of verse 4. The B part of verse 4 said that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Can we say amen? amen? Well, for those of you that are taking notes, if you are, the first point I want to point out to us on the B part of verse 4 is that the saints or the believers have been altered. The saints have been altered. Say that. The saints have been altered. For those of us that are here, amen, the saints have been altered. And for those of you that are watching, I need you to say that. The saints have been altered. God's purpose in election is to save some from sin and redeem them by his grace. God's elected decree is eternal and unchangeable. What God purposed in eternity past, he brings to pass in time. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let me stop here for just a moment and point this out. You cannot put eternity and time in the same place. Right. Hello. Yeah. In time, time brings about conditions. In eternity is forever. Amen. Time brings about limitations. Mm -hmm. Are y'all walking with me? Amen. Time brings about uh, uh, hindrances and, 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 and hiccups mm -hmm. in the road of life. Bumps Amen. and trials and hardships and Amen. things that come up against us. Yesterday we could be feeling good, but yes. today... <clears throat> Pray the Lord, the blood pressure can be acting up, or, or, or the sugar can be acting up, or the old hip can be acting up, the old leg can be acting up, the old back can be acting up in time. But in eternity, there is no bomb. I hope y'all walking with me. Pray the Lord. That, that's, what we, that's what we're looking forward to. Because we are creatures of time. Because we were born in time. Yes. But, but, no, but, but God has made it possible that what he purposed in eternity past, yes. that it would come to pass in time, yes. that one day we will move out of time into eternity. Yes. I wish I had some. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes. So, 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 here, what, 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 look, look, look. God's purpose in election, I gotta go over this again, is to save us, is, is to save us from sin and redeem, save some from sin and redeem them by his grace. God's elective decree is eternal and unchangeable. What God purposed in eternity past, he brings it to pass in time. Every single person he chose in Jesus mm -hmm. before the foundation of the world yes. will be saved. And we'll join him in heaven someday. All right. Amen. Amen. Hello. So those of us that are saved uh -huh. ought to tell the Lord, thank you yes. for choosing me you, in eternity past. Yes. That I can be a uh, fruit in eternity, in time present. Yes. That one day I'll be with him yes. in heaven. Yes. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. What, 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 that is God's eternal purpose. Let me hurry on. His elective decree, his elective, hear me too. His elective decree has consequences in the world today. When a lost sinner is saved by the grace of God, that lost sinner is forever altered by the salvation God gives in Christ Jesus. Did you hear me? I told you, point one is the saints have been altered. Uh -huh. So, when a lost sinner is saved by the grace of God, 
That lost sinner is forever altered by the salvation God gives in, 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 gives in Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. This verse mentions two of those consequences. Praise the Lord. Okay. We have been altered in our practice. Uh -huh. Huh? That's an ad additive. Put that, if you want to put that down, then put an A beside that and say, A, we've been altered in our practice. What are you saying, preacher? This verse says that after salvation, we should be holy. Amen. Did y'all see that? Amen. Hmm? That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That we should be holy. This word holy, H-O-L-Y, refers to a most holy thing. It brings to mind the holy things of the tabernacle and the temple that was set aside for the exclusive use of the Lord. When we are saved, yes. we become saints. Yes. Hello. Glory. Go back to verse 1 right quick and look at that. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints, y'all see that? Yes. Which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. I know it's just a few of us in here, but y'all can talk back to me. I say, y'all see that? Yes. Saints. Yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. When we are saved, we become saints. Yes. We become a holy thing set apart for the master's use. Yes. We can alter. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know that we all fall short in our practice. Yeah. None of us is as holy as he or she should be. Mm -hmm. We also know that we are not as wicked as we used to be. All right. yeah. Amen. In other words, if you are saved, there has been a change in your life. Hallelujah. Hello. Amen. Well, if you don't mind, we're going to need to go there. 2 Corinthians. 2 uh -huh. Corinthians chapter 5. Praise his name. 2 mm. Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Mm. Verse 17 says this. Woo. Therefore, Therefore. Mm. if any man be in Christ, right. he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You've been set apart and you've been commanded to live your life under the will of God, our Father. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. You're going to need your Bibles today. Those of you that are, that are watching my way uh, uh, of the live stream on Facebook, go to 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise his holy name. Over there, 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise his holy name. And we're going to find there, uh, in there, in there. And, and, and when we, we're going to go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 when we leave 1 Peter. So if you want to be trying to find that, you can by, by the grace of God. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16 says this, because it is written. Y'all see that? In verse 16 of 1 Peter chapter 1, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Do I have anybody that's a witness today? Amen. Huh? Yeah. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. Do I have a witness here? Amen. Glory to God. Uh, please just hold it in. Let me, let me, let me, let me uh, hallelujah, point out to you by the grace of God that he wants us to understand glory, hallelujah, that we are we are, praise his holy name, that we are to be, uh, glory to God, holy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy. Why don't we ride? I guess if we was in a Bible study session, so to speak, I could get some responses. But, yeah. uh, why don't we ride with the Lord know my heart? We ride that old cliche. Mm -hmm. He's saying to us in his word, when he comes into our lives, he alters 
our ways. He alters the way we live and that we are holy. H-O-L-Y, holy. Self-side for the master's use. Anybody walking with me on this? Yes, yes. Huh? Set aside for the master's use. Mm. Well, let me, let me, let me. And I, and, and I know it seems like, what, what, what's wrong with it? It looks like he lost his spot or something. No. I, I, I'm trying to make sure I emphasize that we can't find ourselves always wanting to ride the old cliche on, to give ways of excuses yeah. for things that we do, but that we are live according as God has placed it for us to live. Yeah. I know we can't live it ourselves, but we can live it. You, you, we can live it by our own power. Uh -huh. That's why He gave us the Holy Ghost.
this, this, these particular scriptures that I want to point out. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19 said, For as much as ye know that ye were redeemed, ye were not redeemed. Ye were not redeemed. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your father. From your fathers. You were not redeemed. You were not purchased. You were not bought back by corruptible things. Yeah. Verse 19 says, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Y'all walking with me? Amen. A relative perfection. Uh -huh. 
Relative means I'm some kin somehow. Hello. Amen. Huh? When you say, when you say, uh, y'all walking with me? Amen. When you say, oh, that brother John know that. Yeah, that's one of my relatives. That means we some kin somehow. Huh? So there's a relative perfection. There's a relative perfection that's kin to God's absolute perfection, but it's not absolute perfection, but it's relative perfection. And what relative perfection is, is that as a believer in Christ, I have the right that wherever I go wrong, I can go to the Lord and get it right that I fall back in my right standing with him. Amen. I have the right, because the scripture says, if any man sin, he has an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, which means I can go to him and say, Lord, forgive me for where I've gone wrong. And guess what? When I mean that sincerely from my heart, guess what? It puts me back in right standing with God. Amen. Relative perfection. All right. Somebody want to say man. Well, <laughs> According to the Bible, when we came to Jesus for salvation, God justified us. Uh -huh. According to Romans, and you write this down if you so desire, and, and, and Romans 5 and 1 and then Romans 5 and 9. Romans 5 and 1 says this, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Are y'all walking with me? Please just hold it in. Therefore, being justified, because we are justified by faith. Hello. Remember I told you last week, you are saved by faith. Hello. Y'all walking with me? Okay. So therefore, being justified by faith, since we are justified by faith, look at what it says. We have peace with God. We're not out of whack with God. We're not out of sync with God. We're not enemies of God. But we are at peace with God. We have a relationship with God. We have peace with God through our Lord. How do we get it? Through Jesus. The Son of God. By the flesh. Remember, there's only one God. But he manifests himself as the Son of God by the flesh because spirit could not breathe. And he had to take on sinful flesh. There ain't no three God. Ain't no three separate dogs now. One God. One God. Yes, Deuteronomy, I believe it is, 6 and 4 tells us, Hear, O Israel, mm -hmm. the Lord our God is one. one. Mm -hmm. Please just hold your name. Amen. But he manifests himself as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. And so we have peace with God, uh, with, uh, with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 9 said, Much more than, be not, much more than, being now justified, 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 made right by his blood. Oh, I wish I had time. We shall be saved from the wrath of him because we are justified by the blood that he shed it on Calvary. We are saved, hallelujah, from the wrath of him. Guess what? His wrath is coming one day. Amen. Well, the word justified means to render or to declare one to be just, righteous, or as he ought to be. When we were saved, God imputed the perfect righteousness to our account and de declared us to be perfect in his sight. Go to Romans, if you will, chapter 4. Now, this scripture I want us to go to. Romans chapter 4. Lord, help us here. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. Praise his holy name. Verse 20. Verse 20, verse 20 of Romans Amen. chapter 4 is where we will begin. Woo. Verse 20. Amen. Praise the Lord. He staggered not. Uh -huh. Y'all see that? Yes, uh -huh. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, yes. giving glory to God. Verse 21. And being fully persuaded right. that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Yes, and therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Talking about Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. It was imputed to him for righteousness. Not now. Verse 23. Now it was not written for his sake alone. Yes. Amen. That it was imputed to him. Do y'all see that? Amen. But for us also. Yes. Hello. It wasn't written just for Abraham's 
see, but it was written for us also. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. To whom it shall be imputed. Yeah. For if we believe on him yeah. that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, yeah. who was delivered to our office for our office and was raised again for our justification. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. yes. Glory to yes. God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. When God sees one of his redeemed children, he does not see a son fit for hell. Amen. He sees a saint worthy of heaven. Amen. He does not see Amen. us as we are. Amen. He sees us as he has made us My in Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus, we are complete, according to Colossians 2 10. Y'all write that down. In Jesus, we are secure and we are healed for glory. Not because of what we have done, but all because of the perfect, finished work of Christ on the cross. Can we say amen? amen. Well, Lord, let me, let me hurry on here and point out to you as we look at uh, point two, verse 4b to verse 5. Of Ephesians 4 B, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That we should be, that we should be holy and without blame before Hallelujah. Him. Uh, verse 5 said, having predestined uh -huh. us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. Lord, help me to press my claim uh -huh. here today. Praise His holy name. Not, 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 look, 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 look. The, the, the second point I want you to, the, the point that the write down is that, that, that the saints have been adopted. Mm -hmm. That we've been adopted. You got that? Right. Not only have the saints of God been altered by the power of grace and salvation, we have also been adopted into God's family. These verses reveal several truths about this matter of our adoption in God's family. Uh -huh. Eight. The results of our adoption. Uh -huh. The moment we were saved, we were adopted into the family of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Human adoption is a wonderful thing. I dealt with this, but I gotta go back over here. When human parents choose a child to adopt, they do so because they found the child they love and want to be a blessing to. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Don't you think so? Amen. Humans have been adopted children for thousands of, have been excuse me, humans have been adopted children for thousands of years. In fact, adoption was quite common in the Roman world. When a Roman citizen adopted a child, certain rules applied that brought great benefit to the one being adopted. Yeah. The word adoption means to place as a son, yeah. to place as a son or a daughter, to place as a part of the family. Do I have a witness here? The picture of adoption is a beautiful picture of what God does for the repentant sinner. In the ancient world, the family was based on a Roman law called P A R T R P A T R I A. Pateria. Uh, Pray the Lord. Uh, uh, look, look, it meant the father's power. The Father's power. Amen. Somebody ought to say your name. Yes. The law gave the Father absolute authority over his children right. as long as the Father lived. Bring it on. Bring it on. Mm -hmm. Do you yes. hear me? Yes. He could work, enslave, uh -huh. sell, and if he wished, he could pronounce the death penalty regardless of the child's adult age. The father held all power over personal and property rights. I wish y'all were. Therefore, adoption was a serious matter. Yet it was a common practice to ensure that a family would not become extinct by having no male children. Lord have mercy. Yes, yes, yes. When a child was adopted, uh -huh. three legal steps were taken. Okay. Five. One, 
the adopted son was adopted permanently. Mm -hmm. He could not be adopted today and disinherited tomorrow. All right. He became a son of the father forever. Yeah. He was eternally secure as a son. Yeah. Y'all hear me? Two, the adopted son immediately had all right of a legitimate son in the new family. Amen. In other words, the adopted son had the same right as a blood son in the family. Yes. Number three, the adopted son completely lost all rights in his old family. Oh, the adopted son was looked upon as a new person. So the so 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 new, so new that the old debts and obligations connected with his former family was canceled out and abolished as if they never existed. Right. I wish y'all were walking. That's what happened to us when we came to Jesus for salvation. We were instantly adopted in the God's family and became, as the text said, children. Romans 8, 15 points out to us these words. I, I got to go there, y'all. I got to go there. I got to go there. Romans 8, 15 points out to us this. Lord, have mercy. Romans 8, 15 points out to us these words. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. In other words, he become my daddy Amen. forever. I'm eternal. Look, look, hit yourself and tell yourself, I'm eternally secure. He can't disinherit me. Ah, glory to God. When we removed from our own family, when we were removed from our own family, and placed in Jesus, yeah. we were removed from death yeah. and darkness of the past yeah. and reborn into the family yeah. and kingdom of God, yeah. according to Colossians 1.13. Right. So now in Christ Jesus, we are the sons of God. First yeah. John 3 and 2 and Galatians 4 and 6 are pointing that out, that, that we remain if they look that we read that we that that look look that will remain that look that part that part will remain our standing throughout eternity. That's where we Lord have mercy. Come on. I, 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 I don't want to get into that. That's where we get into eternity. I'm gonna point this out, but I'm not gonna get into it. Another time we'll get it. That's where we get into what is called eternal security. All right. Please know. Say that eternal security. Hallelujah. Well, let, let, let me go on. Verse 5 points out to us, uh, and, and, and the B, B, B under, under this point too is the, uh, the road to our adoption. Verse 5 says, uh, verse 5 says, verse 5 says this, that God, y'all, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready in verse 5? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? That God predestined us unto the adoption of children. That word or predestinated, as some like to pronounce it, uh, bothers a lot of people. It should not cause us concern. Amen. On the contrary, it should fill our hearts with praise. This word means to foreordain, to decide beforehand, to predetermine. I'm hurrying on. Election has to do with God's choice for some for salvation in eternity past. Predestination has to do with God's work in time to bring us to faith in Christ. Election determined who would be saved. Predestination determined that all those who would be saved would be adopted into God's family as his children. The ultimate goal of predestination is God taking lost sinners saving them by his grace and making them like his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It seemed that God would not be satisfied until he had surrounded himself with sons and daughters. It seemed that God would not be satisfied until he had filled his family with a redeemed people who would be conformed to the image of his darling son. Praise his holy name. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, 
Verse 28 through 30 will point that out to you. Write it down and read it in your slap time. It seems that God would not be satisfied until he had claimed for his son a perfect, holy, and redeemed bride in whom was no spot or blemish. According to Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Lord, help me here. I got to hurry on because I found it. I wouldn't hold us too long. So, so I got I to gotta point this out. So God was at work before you were born to see to it that you would cross paths with the gospel at the precise moment when you would be ready to hear it, repent of your, of your sin, and embrace Jesus Christ for salvation. Every event in our lives up to the moment we were saved was God working to bring us to faith in Jesus Christ. Every hurt, Lord have mercy. Every heart break, hey, 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 pray the Lord. Hey, 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 I me here. Hey, look, I gotta hear it here. Every hurt, pray the Lord. Every heartbreak, every move, every miracle, every valley, every victory, every broken promise, every shadow of dream, everything that took place in life was God placing up sovereignly.
than we can accept it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Come to verse 6. Yeah. We can accept it. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody ought to shout for it. Uh -huh. We can accept it. Yeah. Glory to God. Uh -huh. We are in the family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm in the family. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. I told them in the Wilson family. I said, I'm in here now. Oh, when some of them want to act funny with me, yeah. I said, I'm in here now. Hey, you, you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't have to have nothing to do with it, but you can't do nothing about it. Oh, I got the name yeah. and everything they come with. Right. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Well, I'm in the family of God. Mm -hmm. And whether you like me or not, hey, hey, there's nothing hey, you can hey, do about it. For he ain't let you decide for me, no. He decided for himself. So I'm accepted. I, I've been eternally secure. I'm in there forever and ever. I'm his son. You ought to hit yourself and say, you are your son. Y'all lay and say, I'm your daughter. Hallelujah. Can't nobody put me out. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know, like the old song said this, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else
Yeah, if the praise team ain't in place, we're going to keep it moving in the house. Amen. The minister's going to be in place. Amen. Amen. And they're going to lead us in praise and worship. If they ain't in place, the Jordan's going to come up here and sing the best he can. Yeah. And lead us in praise yeah. and worship. Yeah. In the name of the Lord. That's a faithful brother back right there. Praise his holy name. We are going to open up in September, the first Sunday, and we're going to move from there. Now, if something should happen that they tell us, shut it down, then we're going to be obedient. Amen. But we're going to open up. We're going to come on back to worship. Amen. We got enough pills and enough seats in here. We can practice social distance in the name of the Lord. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 We're grateful and we pray to the Lord for each of you. Amen. Let the church Say Thank 